It's a very, very exciting time because it's kind of at the confluence of many, many different disciplines. And um, so protein design has um, and protein engineering have really profited from really parallel advances in many areas. So I would say start for started, starting, I mean, we've been, um, you know, uh, developing Rosetta and sort of protein design methodologies for a number of years and really starting with very simple problems, like could we design a sequence which folded up to a stable structure that wasn't found in nature and gradually adding in more and more sophisticated functions. Um, so I would say the first is sort of basic understanding of the science and software engineering um, and software development. Then the second is this, these calculations are extremely time intensive. So the, you know, the rapid increase in the power of computing and the amount of available compute power have made a huge difference. The kind of things we do now would not have been possible with the computing available 20 years ago. And then third, um, kind of the, geno the genomics revolution um, and everything that came with it have been really critical. So now when we're testing designs, after we've um, designed, uh, found a sequence or designed a sequence that's predicted to fold up to a protein that has a function that we're, that, that, um, we're trying to design, uh, we, um, we can order a gene, a synthetic gene that encodes that protein, and it can be here in as, as, few, as few as three days. Then companies like Twist and Agilent have figured out how to scale uh, gene synthesis. So for cases where we want to get a lot of experimental feedback on many, many different designs, we can actually on the computer now design hundreds of thousands of different um, sequences and uh, uh, and uh, these companies can can send will send back a tube that encodes a hundred that, that is gene synthetic genes for a hundred thousand different gene hundred thousand different designs. So when we experiment, and then we've worked out sort of the high throughput experimental methods for screening all of those, which gives us a huge amount of information to feed back to improve the model. And then finally, deep learning is really arriving on, has really arrived on the scene, and that's uh, pushing what we can do even further ahead. Um, so it's really the confluence of many different um, advances in many different areas, which is making this area move so quickly. I would say the final one is that we're having some success in designing proteins that have new functions and we're spinning out companies that are advancing these and that's creating more and more enthusiasm and more interest uh, in these methods. And so the other thing that's, this isn't really a technology thing, this is more a human thing. We're getting you know, really smart, uh, fantastic people from all over the world coming here with bringing their own ideas in and um, sort of learning you know, and contributing to the very rapid forward pace of this field.